You're probably familiar with Dr. Phil, a psychologist turned TV star who fronts one of the most popular talk shows in America. According to Dr. Phil himself, his show provides the most comprehensive forum on mental health issues in the history of television. For a decade, the show has attempted to make psychology accessible and understandable to the general public, and this to great success. The format is simple. Dr. Phil brings on a wide array of characters, ranging from misbehaving teenagers to convicted murderers, in promise of treatment and aid with their various issues, and broadcasts those conversations to an audience of millions, transcending past the boundaries of television, making its way into the online space, where his videos rack up millions upon millions of views. It is generally beloved by audiences and critics alike, providing a captivating look into the troubled minds of America and their stories. It seemed like everything was going well, but over the many years that the show had been broadcasted for, the public opinion slowly started to shift and cracks began to appear on the facade of the altruistic television icon that so many grew to love. In fact, over the last few years, fundamental issues with the program have surfaced that just cannot be ignored. His show has come under heavy fire from psychotherapists and other mental health professionals for many of McGraw's practices, calling his actions incredibly irresponsible and downright unethical, because it turned out that something far more sinister was going on. Join me, as we will be delving deep into the hidden side behind the Dr. Phil persona and expose what had been hiding in plain sight all along, the exploitation of society's most vulnerable. The 19-year-old says she was sexually assaulted by a staff member at a Garfield County Center for Troubled Teens. Reported that she was assaulted, uh, she was punished by staff. We think it is long overdue for Turnabout Ranch to be held accountable for what happened to Hannah. Part when of she the whole Dr. Phil there. show is they send these kids to either Turnabout or these other programs that are also in the shop. Because he had just seen me sober like an hour and a half before. We do deep dives on these programs. I personally feel they swept this under the rug without even bothering to interview Hannah as a victim. What, what would have happened if I died better? She says that the place that she was recommended to go was uh, abusive to her, wouldn't let her sleep. What are your, what are your re uh, responses to her? Phil McGraw is no stranger to controversies. In fact, since his promising beginnings as a reoccurring segment on The Oprah Winfrey Show, drama has always been in sight. Despite what the program's title might mislead you to think, Dr. Phil is not a licensed doctor. He is, and always has been, an entertainer. He was never authorized to practice in California, where his show is filmed, and his original permit ran out in 2006. Even though the state has outlawed practicing any form of psychology without the needed paperwork, a further dig into the documents reveals that he gets around this by making his patients sign waivers, clarifying that they aren't getting help from a professional, but mere advice from an individual. Why would anyone believe that Phil McGraw knows something special, clinically? Dr. Phil really isn't acting in the role of a psychologist at all. He hasn't practiced since 1990. Now, he had his license until 2006, so even if he did know something, how is he going to apply it in that forum? Again, his show is not designed to deliver therapeutic services. He's not putting the needs of his clients ahead of his own agenda. So if Phil McGraw says it's not therapy, and he's not practicing in any way, what is it? He's an entertainer who has studied psychology and who doesn't even have a license to practice anymore. The fact the show makes no effort to do any of those uh, educational things I think makes clear that its intentions are pure entertainment rather than anything beneficial for anybody. This, however, didn't stop him from becoming one of the highest paid media personalities in the world. But in spite of his seemingly endless amount of wealth and success, the self-described entrepreneur has never shied away from the opportunity to make a quick buck, even if the offers presented are incredibly shady at best and seriously dangerous at worst. Using his platform and the trust of his audience to promote pretty much anything you're willing to pay him for. With a diverse array of products, from unfounded weight loss programs to even something as dangerous as cancer-causing diabetes medication, Dr. Phil has got you covered. 
You know, we were just talking about stress and taking time to take care of yourself. And the stress of this pandemic has had a lot of people looking for ways to relax and enjoy a break, even if it's just a short break for a few minutes. And for many people, that break came in the form of games on their cell phones. And one very popular app game is Solitaire Grand Harvest. It's an app game called Bingo Blitz. Learn more about mental illness, make sure and check out one of my favorite websites, gethealthystayhealthy.com. I was looking at a study the other day and these games actually do uh, improve your brain function. They actually do, if your kids are doing these things, they actually do have some uh, positive effects, so no doubt about it. It's an app game called Solitaire Grand Harvest and you can play it right on your mobile device he won on Survivor, but now... I've never talked to a guest that was closer to death. Former reality TV star Todd Herzog appeared on the program in 2013 after battling alcoholism for several years. After arriving at the studio and making his way to the designated wardrobe, he discovered multiple liters of vodka that were seemingly placed there by a staffer, which he drank down to the last drop. Show up to the studios and I'm sober, I'm hurting a lot and I'm shaking. My dad was there and I went and talked to him in his dressing room and I was completely sober. There was two liters of vodka and like some Red Bulls and orange juice and stuff like that. You know, being unsupervised by my parents, I drank the entire bottle. Subsequently, he was dragged on stage after being given Xanax by the crew, a mix of substances that could have ended fatally. Hi, uh, Dr. Phil. Hi, I'm Todd. Next thing you know, I'm being carried onto the stage because I can barely walk. And then at some point, somebody gave me a Xanax. They said, this will calm your nerves. And so um, I had been drinking and took a Xanax, which I've never taken Xanax before in my life. According to eyewitnesses and people in close relation to Herzog, he was fully sober when he arrived. And my dad was furious because he had just seen me sober like an hour and a half before. You might say this was a simple slip up. They merely placed the beverage in his room on accident only to realize the mistake later on. Nope, because when Herzog returned to the broadcast a few months later, he found himself in an identical setup. Yet again, vodka magically appeared in the wardrobe of the man that was suffering from severe alcoholism. Woke up, went to the dressing room area again. There was vodka for me. However, I was like, I'm not drinking a full bottle again, <laughs> but I will drink some <laughs> because I'm an alcoholic with a mission. This wasn't an accident. These bottles were deliberately placed in his room to create a more interesting show, as Dr. Marion Boyle put it. The important thing here is that this isn't a TV drama. This is someone's life. Danielle Brugoli is arguably the most notorious guest on The Dr. Phil Show. Her appearances on the program have wrecked in hundreds of millions of views and heavily contributed to the show's infamy online, as well as kickstarting Danielle's controversial presence on the internet. The 13-year-old appeared on the show in 2017 after multiple incidents with her mother that resulted in her reaching out to Dr. Phil for help. Danielle's severe behavioral issues ranged from stealing her mother's credit card to Grand Theft Auto. It was so intense that her mother, Barbara Ann, told the show that she was struggling so much that she was debating handing her daughter over to the authorities. After Danielle's infamous episode of Dr. Phil transpired, she was sentenced to stay at Turnabout Ranch, a child rehabilitation center located in the middle of Utah. But not even she could perceive what would take place at the ranch. There appears to be a major problem in Utah. She says that I was on his show five years ago uh, and I was recommended to go off to this boot camp and they uh, were abusive at this boot camp. It is not just drug abusers. It is not just juvenile offenders. These are children with ADHD. These are kids that have autism. These are kids that are gay. The plaintiff was sent to the Turnabout Ranch after an appearance on the Dr. Phil show. Instead, I experienced retaliation from the ranch after I spoke up and what appeared to me to be a punishment for reporting my abuse. So I don't, I'm not really sure why Dr. Phil still sends kids here. Danielle Brigoli released a Breaking Code Silence video on March the 9th of 2021, motivated by Paris Hilton's movement about the horrors behind the troubled teen industry. 
Somewhere in the middle of August, I went I went on the Dr. Phil show. So part of the whole Dr. Phil show is they send these kids to either Turnabout or these other programs that are also in Utah. Come in in the middle of the night. They don't tell them where they're going. They just take them, they handcuff them, they put them in the car. It's basically like kidnapping. The image of a ranch rehabilitating troubled teens with the power of hard work and country values crumbled with Bergoli's video. In the post, Danielle recounted stories of her conditions at Turnabout that culminated in a series of allegations, including verbal, physical, and sexual abuse, as well as negligence on behalf of the staff. That's the thing with these places is you have no evidence. You don't have a phone there. They don't have cameras there. Like, there's no evidence of none of this. And obviously, all the staff is in on it, so they're not going to snitch on each other. All you really have is the kids that are there. Teens at the ranch were allegedly denied access to things many take for granted, like basic hygiene or warm bed. This place is all about taking away privileges. Like, okay, yeah, the phone is a privilege, TV, like all that. But they take away like necessity privileges, like sleeping on a bed, eating good food, not being cold. Things as simple as singing and dancing weren't permitted. Turnabout is actually so remote that the town has its own airport and the nearest neighboring city is hundreds of kilometers away. Okay, so Turnabout is in the middle of Escalante, Utah. It's a very, 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 very small town. It's got one gas station, one, one grocery store. Everybody knows everybody there. You see you're in the middle of nowhere. You know there's nowhere to run. If you try to run out there, you're either, they're gonna find you, you're gonna get in more trouble, or you're, if you do get away, you're gonna get eaten by a coyote or something. The reason why facilities like this are built in Utah is due to the very loose law and the lack of inspections that they have to go through. As Danielle pointed out in her video, even if you managed to flee the ranch, you would still be facing the elements of nature on your own. Wildlife and freezing temperatures posed very real threats, but it didn't stop kids from desperately trying to get away. In one case, the conditions that turn about ranch forced a child to reach a deadly conclusion. 17-year-old Clay Brewer, who was, despite his history with suicidal urges and substance abuse, which violated the camp's guidelines, admitted to turnabout. December 16th, 2016, staff member Alicia Keller and a few of the teens were wrapping up breakfast when another team began frantically banging on the dining room door and told Alicia Jimmy had been hit. One morning I was cleaning up for breakfast and one of the staff members was sitting right next to me and she had her walk on her, so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy. As Alicia went out into the hall, she found Jimmy's limp body lying on the floor, covered in blood. She then saw Clay, who had stolen Jimmy's wallet and car keys, attempting to flee, but Jimmy's car wouldn't start. When Alicia went after Clay, he turned his attention to her, hitting her two to three times on the head with a piece of rebar. Clay later told a police officer he had used the same rebar to hit Jimmy in the head at least 10 times. Alicia ran back into the ranch and locked the door, while Clay stood outside screaming that if she didn't give him her car keys, he would break in and kill each and every single person inside. Alicia eventually relinquished her keys and Clay took off. Although Alicia survived the attack, she ended up disabled and sadly passed away two years later. Not only did Jimmy die, but one of the other staff members that was there at the time, Alicia, who was the daughter of the nurse, Alicia, she was um, also injured and two years later she died and she was also left disabled after being attacked by Clay. The next day, the teens were told to never utter a word about what they'd seen or heard. Life at the ranch continued on as normal, as if nothing had happened. They made all the kids that were at Rowdy come down, and then they didn't. They told us not to tell us anything. A day later, they have us all, all every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all sit in a circle, and they're like, listen, there was an incident, I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies, Jimmy died. And so we're all freaking out, because Jimmy was, like I said, he was one of them that was there the first day I got there. Two years later, Clay told the court he woke up that morning feeling heartless. Clay was severely addicted to prescription pills, which began at the age of 15 after his parents' divorce. So the mother of um, the kid Clay who killed the staff, she was married to the brother of the president of the program which I also believe is a conflict of interest. I don't know why they would do that. Anymore. So it was really sad. Like they wouldn't tell us what happened and all that. And any of the kids that were there, like they couldn't talk about it, but they were like really traumatized by it. Even the ones that weren't there were traumatized by it. Like I heard it over the walkie. He attempted to commit suicide many times, including shortly after arriving at the ranch by drinking bleach. Clay was going through a withdrawal, 
was not given medical attention and was abused by the staff at the ranch. Clay's crimes cannot be justified, but it's likely they could have been prevented had he been sent to a proper rehabilitation facility and given the medical attention he required at the time. According to the ranch's own website, they do not admit teens who show aggressive behaviours that could put other students or staff at risk, or those who have active suicide attempts. Despite the fact Clay met this criteria, the ranch accepted him into their program. Hannah Archuleta was admitted to the ranch after making an appearance on the Dr. Phil show. She was only a week into her stay when a male staff member sexually assaulted her. Hannah was scared to make this known, but when the misconduct refused to end, she finally built up the courage to confide in three female staff members, hoping for support. Unfortunately, it took a darker turn. After being told to write a detailed letter about her abuse, which she fully complied with, she was punished for speaking up. I expected to be treated with understanding. Instead, I experienced retaliation from the ranch after I spoke up in what appeared to me to be a punishment for recording my abuse. As stated by the lawsuit, a residential coach accused Archuleta of lying because she was crying so much, claiming that only liars cried. The punitive actions included the likes of picking up horse menu, being refused basic necessities, and sitting at a desk facing a wall for hours. Quote, I had to do forced labor outside in below freezing temperatures and sleep on a wooden plank with no pillow. After she managed to get in contact with her father and telling him about the mistreatment that she was subjected to, he immediately retrieved her from the ranch and reported the abuse to the local authorities. Turnabout Ranch is now being sued by the family, alleging the facility was negligent in hiring the male staffer who assaulted her and intentionally inflicting emotional distress on her. There appears to be a major problem in Utah at some residential facilities which have developed programs that have been marketed as programs which help troubled teens. I personally feel they swept this under the rug without even bothering to interview Hannah as a victim. The suit is the latest accusation of abuse against youth behavioral treatment facilities in Utah. The lawsuit alleges Hannah was forced to perform hours of extra manual labor in extreme conditions while sleeping on a wooden plank. There was already lawsuits before I went there. There's now many more after, but there was one as far back as 2012. Now this place has been going since the 90s, I think. The establishment has denied the accusations, coming forward with the following statement. We would never take lightly to an allegation of mistreatment to any of our students. Now that this incident is the subject of litigation, we must withhold our response for a later date. But it is important to note that these allegations were fully investigated and that the account given by opposing legal counsel to the media was incomplete, to say the least. Phil McGraw responded to these allegations in an interview, claiming that no direct exchange between the facility and the program existed while brushing over the vast majority of the accusations. Uh, we don't have anything to do uh, with what happens with guests once they leave the stage. I mean, that's between the guardian and the parent and whatever facility they go to. So we're not involved in that. We don't have any feedback from them. So it, whatever happens once they're there, uh, that's between them and the, and the facility. This claim it's false, as Danielle's mother signed a consent of release of information form with the purpose of keeping interested parties informed of progress. So I don't, I'm not really sure why Dr. Phil still sends kids here. It just, it really doesn't make sense. Like, are you trying to help them or are you trying to hurt them even more? It would have been almost impossible for Dr. Phil or his team to be ignorant of these facts. Yet, despite the several allegations, the Turnabout Ranch continues to be promoted by the Dr. Phil show to this day. This also contradicts the following statement. Well, actually, we do deep dives on these programs. If what Dr. Phil said here is true, he'll be using his position of power to admit children to a place that has a history of torture, sexual assault, and literal murder, which begs the question, should he be in this position in the first place?